It's about 23.30 hours on Monday evening, or I should say Monday night, July 11th, 2022. And if this looks like an episode of Worlds at the Ranch, it's not. It's an episode of Training Tuesday, which is going to air in just a few hours on Tuesday, July 12th, 2022. This is one of our Royal Pythons. This is a Python Regis that we got almost three years ago now. He's one of the first two Royal Pythons that we ever got. His name is Amun. And I took the glass off his enclosure so that you could get a full view of how he was waiting in ambush position and how this target training session goes. And he is doing that strange thing that it seems like many Python Regis do which is approach the target or the perceived prey at a, an angle. It's like he's looking at it sideways. So instead of coming straight for it, he's actually looking off to the right of the target and he's kind of approaching it at an angle. And then when I change the orientation of the target from vertical to horizontal, which is the snake's signal that he's reached the end of the behavior and I'm going to deliver reinforcement, he does come more directly towards the target, but then as he approaches the road and he starts to do that sideways thing a little bit. And I don't know why they do this and neither do researchers. About a month ago on June 2nd, 2022 for an episode of Royals at the Ranch, I did an entire video about Python Regis strike performance. They actually do strike at their prey oddly as they age and their strike performance gets worse. So if you're interested in actually learning more about that, there's a paper and it's titled Ontogeny of Strike Performance in Ball Pythons, parentheses Python Regis, a three-year longitudinal study. It was published in the journal Zoology in 2020 and the author is Ryerson W.G. And I'll of course put that in the comments. Something else that you may find quite interesting is the way that he's eating. He is hanging from his log. He does slightly wrap his tail around his log and he's hanging down in a vertical position and he's eating this way. And this shows how he's gained confidence over the years because what he used to do is he used to get into an ambush position in his rock cave and just stick his head and part of his neck out. And he would target slightly out of his rock cave and he would grab the food and then he would snatch it and take it back into his cave with him and then eventually he would eat it while hanging partially out of his cave and now when he is exhibiting hunting behavior he is coming completely out into the open he's moving around his enclosure he's getting into ambush positions with pretty much his whole body out in the open when he's taking the food he is eating the prey usually hanging off of something like this and he's not phased by me filming he's not phased by me in the vicinity he's not phased by being partially out of his enclosure and he is three years old now i got him when he was four or five months old and he came from tsk which is the snake keeper inc He's one of two Royal Pythons I got in March of 2020 when I started a study about Python Regis. And so with that said, let's take a look at our other one that we got at the same time. This is Amunet. She did not come from the same place, but I got her at the exact same time and picked them up on the exact same day in March of 2020. She came from disturbed reptiles. Now you see that she's in her tunnel and she looks like a statue. I promise you this is a live video. Now I have the flashlight and I'm not shining it directly on her. I'm shining it on the wall to kind of reflect on her so that you can see her a little bit better in the video. And then I present the target to her and she remains in this position for almost three minutes without moving. With her, I have to watch for very, very subtle body language and make sure that I'm reinforcing even the slightest motion. I was not getting any motion from her in the position where I had the target originally. Over three minutes went by and I decided to pause for a second and reset. 
and she does move her head to the right when I change the position of the target to her right side. And then what I'm watching for there is some tongue flicks. And that is enough of a substantial step for this particular snake that I need to go ahead and reinforce her. And then she is very, very cautious about approaching the rodent. And she has always been this way. She was several months old when I got her. And I started her training and Am Moon's training much, much differently than I start the royals that I've got recently within the last year, who, if you follow the videos, you can see are much, much more engaged in the target training activities and much more responsive to the training sessions and, and the activity than these two are. But she almost starts to shake. She is so tense when approaching the food. And I'm watching very closely because I don't want her to retreat. And I'm watching that her body continues to move slightly forward. And I see that she's shaking. I see that she's very, very tense about the whole situation. It's likely too dark for you to see, but the back half of her body started to retreat into the tunnel. And I knew at that point that she was either going to retreat completely or go ahead and make her move and strike at the prey, which is what she did. In contrast to those sessions by the number one most owned pet snake in the world, let's look at the number two most owned pet snake in the world. One of our corn snakes, this is Sundust, targeting out of her enclosure, shifting into her temporary holding bin. She does this very quickly. She does it very well. This footage was not sped up. And she is safely in her holding bin eating her food so that I can now clean her enclosure and take my time doing that while she eats in her tub safely. Mm -hmm. 